But it's open now, and we'll see if we get the minute seconds to play around with this and the next one or two questions that I shared with you. So it's the same thing. It's the Socrative, and it's the pair BB room. So if you want to play, please play with me. Um, we have uh, four good, important points still around the theme of confidence intervals. The topic of today. Now is the time, we discussed it a couple of weeks ago in the first day already. Now we are more ready to get into it again. The framework of what we do and the statistical language, some of the terminology and the way of talking about it. And uh, of course, these are some of the things that you will get used to by doing it in this course. So, so it's a, sometimes a bit abstract when you just read about doc, 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 it gets a bit like this. But I think now is the time to mention it, and then you can get used to it as the weeks go along. We already saw back in chapter one that we talk about an observational unit when we do statistical inference. Statistical inference is what we've just done. Computing a confidence interval is statistical inference. That is trying to infer, say something about the real life out there based on my sample, right? That's statistical inference. The statistical population is a bit more abstract than the word population would mean to us in a daily, day-to-day -day verbal conversation. Uh, it could be the same as a population as we usually use the word, but it, it, we have to be slightly more exact when we need to be exact, that the population in statistic is, in a way, all possible data in that context, right? So all possible heights, for instance, we'll get to that. The sample. As I repeat from a few weeks ago, we use the word sample differently to chemists or biologists or physics uh, people that use the word sample for something in the lab that you have in your, in your bottle or in your petri dish or something. That's your sample if you are a lab guy. We use the word quite differently here. Right? The sample is the set of numbers, the actual data. That's the statistical sample in Danish stikprøve. Um, now we have seen a bit more. We could be precise if we want. The mu and the sigma. We, if we talk, talk stats language, these are parameters. This is another word that are used different by different people in statistics. We may use the word parameter for the interesting unknown things that we are actually performing our experiment or study to find out about, right? The mu and the sigma. We've mostly talked about the mu so far this morning. We estimate the mu by the mean. For instance, that's a specific realization. And then it's a small letter x. We may sometimes to express some of the theoretical results giving us the tools, sort of underlying the tools, the methods. Under the methods, there are some theorems, some results that uh, are based, that gives us the tools, you can say. Then we might talk about the mean, x bar, as capital X bar. That's when we see it as a random variable, which it is, of course. Apart from when we have the actual numbers, then we have realizations. Then we sometimes, and that is, a, it's not something I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to fail anyone because you don't remember the difference between the word estimate and estimator. That would, I wouldn't feel good about that. But uh, it's just to explain to you that there is a formal language around this. And in a way, we use uh, the word yeah, this is a bit funny because the word statistics is the name for the whole course and the whole scientific field and the whole the business field, actually. It, it's actually one of those things, I'd like to emphasize that again, that you can find job advertisements from Novo Nordisk, from Lundbeck, from other companies that are 
wanting a statistician for whatever they have of activity going on. So a statistician is also a word for something used in business, right? Uh, this term statistics is a, for our whole scientific field or area, and even it can mean a lot of different things, actually. And then we use the word statistic in English or statistics for something that we compute, like the mean. That is a statistic in English, right? That's the English thing. Um, and the word, if you want to be formal about it, the word statistic or statistics in plural can actually be used when we talk up, when we talk stats language can, can mean both the one we have computed and the one we see as a random variable. It, it can mean both, actually. It dep and it, it's the context that would uh, say whether we, we mean one or the other. Let's move on because it's a bit abstract, of course. You can get back to this slide if you get in doubt and it's in the e-notes. Example of this formal framework, the heights example. We measure the heights of 10 randomly selected persons from Denmark. The sample, of course, would then be the 10 numbers in our hands, in our computer. We've seen an example. The population, statistical population, understood, are then the heights for all people in Denmark, say. So we define that to be our population in this case. Sometimes that can be discussed in a context, what is your population really? The observational unit is still a person, right? All of what we do here in this course and in all the nice courses following it, and maybe you had some already in other contexts, what we do here, I've said it a number of times, we do statistical inference, slightly more general, we could term it this thing that we learn from data, right? We learn from data when we do statistical inference. And if we want to be more formal about it, you could say we are learning about the mu and the sigma based on the data. From the data, then we l learn about the real life populations out there, distributions from the data. As we said, it's important for this to make sense, to make conclusions about the population based on the sample, based on the data. This data should have been collected in a good way. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Wouldn't make sense if I only sampled the first row here for getting the mean height of people. Well, for the height thing, we have the generic issue of we have at least two group segments of people here, right? We know that, that the females on average are a bit smaller than the, than the males, so how to deal with that? Hmm, that's a challenging problem, actually. And there could be other selection mechanisms, right? Maybe uh, small guys like myself tend to go in the front row because then we can better see. We don't have all these uh, stupid basketball guys in front of us, uh, like at concerts and all. Uh, it's... Uh, why do basketball guys go to concerts? I don't know why they do. Everyone above 170 should be banned at concerts. Uh, oh, anyway, that's a sidestep. Um, how to ensure such a randomness? Such, uh, I should rather say, I was a bit ahead of myself, how to ensure such a meaningfulness, such a representativeness? One tool is to make sure that it's completely random sampled. And that's easy to say out in the air like that. It's more difficult to do in practice, and it's more difficult to be exact mathematically about what it means. So this looks pretty terrible, and I'm not going to dwell many seconds on this. But basically, this is an attempt to formalize this assumption, which is most often will be for us when we work with statistics. We will assume, and then maybe in the beginning of the project, we'll think about whether it's okay. We will assume that we have random sampling, and the random sampling is defined by this. It's defined by, maybe I should just emphasize the word independent is important, then each piece of information that I have in my data set should be independent from each other. So it's not enough to sample a, it's not enough to sample a family and call it in a family, and then by chance you had the basket guy again, and you ask him, how tall are, are you? Well, I'm two. 2 meter 30, well, how tall is your son? Well, he's 2 meter 29, how tall is your other son? 
Well, he's a small guy of 2 meters 17. Okay, great. I have three independent observations of heights in Denmark. No, you didn't. You, by chance, you sampled this extreme guy. And uh, so don't start uh, resampling because if you do independent sampling, you won't hit him again or neither, neither his family. So getting three of these guys in your sample would not be right. That's not independent samples. Um, and the thing that we used in the binomial also, that it should be meaningful to use one distribution for describing the whole population. It should be the same distribution that we sample information about, so that there is a meaningful mean and variance that we are trying to know about. So that's where we are challenged in the height example, actually. If I, if I sample both male and female, I could just say, let me sample just one of the genders, and I would be better off. That's basically what I tried to extract in those two bullet points. Random sampling is okay if they come from the same thing, right? It's the same thing I'm sampling about, the same, same phenomenon, the same population, and I should sample independently. I should not have uh, any um, selections in there. That was the abstract thing on the wording. 